Damn, I've been waiting for this one for a long time. Azeroth's Disk Mini X300 was one of my favourite mini PCs when it released in late 2020, and it's been a hell of a long wait for the successor. So, what's so great about it? Well, the Disk Mini X600 is a DIY mini PC, and allows you to throw in a desktop AMD Ryzen CPU, use your own cooler, memory, and storage in a compact box, which I find a sensible way to make use of AMD's G-series processors focused on integrated graphics performance. The STX motherboard inside has no discrete graphics slot, is powered by an external power supply, and uses DDR5 SOTA memory to keep things as compact as possible. And it sure is small. Not much comes close to the 1.92 litre volume of the Disk Mini in the desktop space, which is why it stings just a little more that it's not quite perfect, and we'll go through it right after this message. Are you looking for a way to safely and quickly transfer files and apps to a new PC? Well, say hello to Ease Us To Do PC Trans, a simple to use app that can help you transfer programs from one PC to another, or create a full backup of your computer. Try it for free with the link in the video description. Azeroth's Disk Mini X600 keeps a lot of what was great with the previous release, and also comes with some welcome improvements. The black steel box looks pretty much the same, and allows you to place it on your disk for either some horizontal or vertical action. <laughs> <laughs> Only one set of adhesive rubber feet are included though, so choose wisely. He chose... Poorly. I'm happy to say that one of my biggest criticisms has been fixed. The X300 launched with a ginormous power brick, while the X600 has a very compact FSP 120W unit. What else you get in the box will depend on the region, as there are optional accessories, some of which would be pretty useful as standard, but we'll go over that later. The crappy cooler is once again bundled with my review unit, while the manual shows a white variant of the Disk Mini, which looks cool. I want it. Hopefully, it becomes widely available. I don't know the pricing for the X600, as it's not being confirmed as of this video, but it should be near or the same as the X300 when it launched, which was 250 Australian dollary dues, or 170 US. If it is around that price, it's damn good value for what you get. One thing to be aware of is that the AM5 CPU and cool support is limited, with both listed on ASRock's website for you to check out. Many 8000G series CPUs are supported, but you can also plonk in some 7000 series processors if you're not looking for maximum integrated graphics performance. And I don't recommend using the bundled cooler, as it has low cooling performance, and it's loud. With the previous X300, I was also able to use an AMD Wraith Stealth Cooler by removing the top plastic shroud. It was tight, but just scraped in and should fit again in this one. It's a decent budget option, best suited for the 8600G and lower. Another major complaint of mine has not been fixed. The Disk Mini X300 released with 4 measly USB ports and a VGA port. What year is it? And the Disk Mini X600 follows the same routine. There's also no external CMOS reset button, which would be very useful, as opening the Disk Mini and shorting the pins is a pain in the ass unless you leave the screws out of the back. Other mini PCs have a CMOS reset, and they don't even have any overclocking options. I haven't had a monitor with a VGA port in years, so I can't test it, but you should be able to get three monitors running with the X600 together with the HDMI and DisplayPort. Even stranger than the lack of USB is that all four of them are just 5 gigabit. So, is this a chipset limitation? Or is it because all the available bandwidth has gone elsewhere? Well, I should point out that the support for four storage drives also returns, with dual M.2 NVMe and dual 2.5 inch SATA, which is great. But I was also very surprised to see the main M.2 slot supports PCIe Gen 5. Yep, Gen 5 and the other is Gen 4. Adding a Gen 5 M.2 for this Mini is one of the stranger decisions, especially if it is at the expense of more USB ports. Why anyone would need a Gen 5 NVMe in this is beyond me, but uh, more power to you if that's just what you've been waiting for. ASRock also offers some optional accessories. Some of these are bundled depending on the region, 
but there's no info on who gets what. The extras include a Wi-Fi kit and a dual USB 2 port expansion which slots in on the side of the case. Both useful to have as standard actually. There's also an RGB lighting strip and VESA mount if you can find those. Okay, so I ended up buying AMD's top G for this review, the Ryzen 8700G. A pricey 8 core 16 thread processor with AMD's Radeon 780M graphics coming in at 500 Aussie dollars or 329 USD. Yikes. The 8600G seems to be the better value option. The G CPUs make a lot of sense in boxes like this one, where you're not going to be using a discrete graphics card. Otherwise, for every other type of build, you just buy one of the non-G CPUs, get better CPU performance, save some money, and call it a day. You're also going to need some DDR5 soda memory. I'm using 32GB of DDR5-5600 I picked up off eBay, a Samsung NVMe drive, and a Noctua cooler. I went with the Noctua L9A AM4 cooler, which came out of the X300, and I got the free AM5 mounting kit in anticipation of the X600. Okay, now I'll quickly show you how it's put together. Four screws on the back to remove, then the board slides out and you can remove the front panel connector to make things easier. The Noctua cooler doesn't use these plastic mounts, so they need to come off. Plunk in your AM5 CPU. The DDR5 slots and the Gen5 M.2 slot is here. The other goodies are under the board, which I'll quickly show you. So there's the Gen4 slot and the two SATA connectors, which you'll connect to the 2.5 inch drives with the included cables. And then you'll mount them under the metal frame. Now we add the thermal paste. I'm all out of Noctua, so bulk GD900 it is. Finish mounting the CPU cooler, plug in the CPU fan connector with two to choose from, add your memory, storage, and we're almost done. Screw in the motherboard, attach the front panel cable, and close it up. Now we just need an OS. I fired up Ubuntu off a USB drive and everything worked just fine. Or if you're planning to game on your desk mini, it will likely go for Windows. And ASRock has all the drivers on the website, or you can use the auto installer app, which pops up on your first install. All right, let's see how the X600 holds up against all the other mini PCs I test. I'm using the default settings in the BIOS, only thing I've done is enable the memory to run at 5600 MHz. For some reason, it defaults to 5200. All right, so nothing impressive in single core Cinebench. There are mobile CPUs coming out slightly ahead. The multi-core, the X600 almost came out on top, but it is still beaten by a 7940HS. In the small Geekbench 6 sample I have, the 8700G took the top spot. It also beat out all the minis in the H.264 video encode. That's not the case with the AV1 software encode, where it fell behind the 8945HS mini, but it matched it in AMD's hardware encode. 3 d Mark is where things start to become weird. I was expecting the 8700G to at least match the other mobile CPUs with the Radeon 780M running DDR5 Sodium 5600, but it's 10% behind even the lowest result. The easiest way to increase the integrated graphics performance is to increase the memory speed. While my Samsung b die crashed at 6400, it was fine at 6000 and saw a 6% boost. But any way you look at it, the results are still worse than they should be. I'm not sure what the problem is. The GPU clock and power runs higher than the mobile chips, yet the frame rate is lower. There are various other overclocking options in the BIOS, and I tried increasing the GPU clock and voltage, but that didn't show a positive result. We'll go into more overclocking options later. At DDR5-6000, 3 Mark DX12 result was close to the mobile chips, but still last in the 780M bunch. So, that's 3D Mark. But is it the reality with actual games? Well, depends on the game. Let's check it out head-to-head -head versus the Geekom A7 with a Ryzen 7940HS. Valorant was pretty much the same across both, but it is a CPU-heavy title, so I'm not surprised. Dota 2 was a bit worse on the Disc Mini,
Counter-Strike 2 is the first game we see a sizable hit to the frame rate on the disc mini. But it did better than the competition in League of Legends. Unfortunately, again a big drop with GTA 5. The Disc Mini didn't quite hold a steady 60 FPS in Tekken 8. And in Forza Horizon 5, again, the Disc Mini is clearly behind. Robocop shows the biggest drop in frame rate yet. Emulation across the board was pretty close to the 7940HS. Kids, he does not play well with others. This is Horizon. Keep it here. The Ryzen 8700G can't handle 4K video editing without much trouble. I've tested this Adobe Premiere 4K project on weaker CPUs without issue, so no surprises here. As mentioned earlier, the STX board defaults to 5200 MHz for the memory in the BIOS. To fix that, head to Advanced Mode, OC Tweaker, and set your memory stored profile. Then, for whatever reason, you still need to set the frequency as well. Those wanting to tighten the timings can also do that. There is a performance mode in the BIOS, but it requires a 180 watt 19 volt power supply, which I don't have. Maybe this would see results closer to the 8700G performance you should be getting out of the box. We have some additional voltage settings, and you can even save profiles to a USB and share online. In advance, there's another AMD overclocking tab, which is what I messed around with briefly, and didn't get much better results. Maybe you'll have better luck. CPU fan is set to silent by default, but I didn't notice much of a difference compared to performance. Efficiency is not the 8700G's strong suit. The performance we did get comes at a much higher maximum power draw. It's pushing the included power supply and leaves little room to add more. An undervolt is the way to go here. The X600 idled at 14 watts with the 8700G, which is on the high end. CPU temp peaked at 90C on my setup. I use a performance fan profile, and here are my noise results. Of course a larger fan, like in the Noctua cooler, has a much more pleasant pitch than the laptop style used in most mini PCs, and even though it wasn't quite under load, it didn't bother me too much. Alright, conclusion time for the ASRock Disk Mini X600. Being able to DIY a mini PC is awesome, and the Disk Mini makes it easy. And if it follows in the X300's footsteps, it should support future AM5 G generation CPUs too. It's great to see a much smaller 120W power brick included this time around. Four storage drives for such a small mini is impressive. If the price ends up similar to the X300, it presents Damn good value.
It's really nice to see a fully featured BIOS. We can make a lot of tweaks that aren't offered with the mini PCs packing mobile CPUs. However, performance out of the box with the 8700G could have been better, especially on the integrated graphics side. Plenty of minis come with a CMOS reset button on the case, and they don't even have overclocking options. The X600 definitely could use one. The lack of USB ports is a real problem, especially if you use a wide mouse and keyboard. I don't think we need a Gen 5 NVMe slot on this. Also, VGA needs to go. And the USB-C port doesn't have any features like display out. A Wi-Fi kit included in the box for a slightly higher price would have been nice too. So, that's the Azeroc Disk Mini X600. A DIY mini PC you can put together yourself and mess around with. Performance was below my expectations, but the improvements and potentially low price help make up for it somewhat. Though, for myself, I'd pair it with an 8600G, as I think the 8700G is too expensive for what you get. The 8600G probably has a lower power draw, which would also translate to lower temps. Anyway, curious to hear your thoughts on the ASRock Disk Mini X600. If you're looking for a low-end embedded ITX board with an Intel N100, check out my review of the ASRock N100 DC ITX right here. Cheers!